কেন্দ্রীয় সরকারের সাগরমালা আঁচনির সর্বাধিক ক্রিয়ান্বয়ন হেতু যা ইংরাজি এগারো আর বারো এপ্রিল তারিখে ডিব্রুগড়স্থ চৌকিডিঙি খেলপথারত ওয়াটারওয়েজ কনক্লেভ টুয়েন্টি টুয়েন্টি টু শীর্ষক অনুষ্ঠানটি আয়োজিত হয়ে যায় পরিপ্রেক্ষিত জল মার্গ পরিবহনের সহ জড়িত বিভাগীয় বিশিষ্ট ব্যক্তিবর্গ জল পরিবহন অধিক সুচল করার ক্ষেত্র প্রয়োজনীয়তা আছে বলে উল্লেখ করে and work together to accrue the best out of England waterways development. I fully endorse with the proposals that has been made by Ambassador Gulaisami and I hope that more uh, recommendations that will come. Uh, I have a short presentation. A lot of work is going on in inland waterways in the country. We have for the first time reached a record cargo of 105 million tons this year and we are growing every day growth we want in the next financial year with the help and connecting the northeastern region we plan to do more business help you all so i have tried to uh, raise many issues and uh, put it in the presentation we have a integrated system in which uh, the waterways which are in the northeastern region are connected to our main waterway area of Ganges and the Odisha system. To this particular grid or an integrated river system which is already existing, you have also sir, kind of highlighted rightly that how the traffic on the Indo-Bangladesh protocol route is also steadily increasing along with the, uh, the, uh, the traffic on uh, the Indian water routes in inland waterway route in India. Uh, three road connectivity to Nepal and then two road connectivity to Bhutan and those both of the road connectivity are actually in Bhutan is from uh, Brahmaputra and in Assam. So that also is something which you have uh, highlighted very well. Sir. We have uh, heard in detail uh, uh, from Mr. Sanjay Bandhupathai the, the uh, infrastructure uh, work that is being done to connect the rivers of uh, India and Bangladesh. Uh, what I will touch in my presentation is uh, the regulatory requirement to have vessels uh, that uh, fully integrate uh, the inland waterways with the coastal shipping and, uh, uh, and some uh, additional uh, requirements for additional connectivity. Uh, that uh, the government of India is uh, working on. I thank you for providing me an opportunity to present my views uh, based on the operations that we have done on waterways. And I'll be sharing actual uh, ground situations while our operations from last 2019 onwards. Okay. Our company, I'll just uh, give a brief introduction about our company, Ocean Well Shipping Services, which is a startup and it was actually formed in 2016 but uh, we did our actual operations in 2018 we spent around uh, two years just to do some research and convince companies to shift cargo on waterways so our uh, yeah. so our first uh, operations was uh, in 2019 where we carried 16 containerized cargo of pepsico cargo from calgary to Varanasi that was received by Honorable PM of India and it created a good response from industries and we were approached by a lot of companies to shift to waterways. Our main vision on waterways is to provide cost efficient and most environment friendly mode of transportation and major leg using waterways. And we are targeting to achieve commercial operations on NW1, NW2, NW16 and connecting Northeast India, Eastern India, Nepal, Bhutan by waterways with the uh, Calgary Port Trust as uh, the main port to assist in uh, significantly reduction of the logistical cost. Uh, there is always uh, a, a challenge to speak uh, at last 
as the last speaker, most of the points uh, are already been discussed. And uh, you have to somehow invent some new points, which is always a challenging job. But as far as motorways are concerned, there is such a vast subject. I remember uh, uh, Mr. Guantapoli. Uh, Guantapoli was uh, the innovator of blue economy. And the way this blue economy has worked uh, in the economy, especially the blue economy in the terms of shipping and logistics economy in the country, is phenomenal. Very recently, within the last two days, some development has happened and uh, Reddy Saab and my very dear, uh, near and dear uh, Chamber of Commerce, Fiki, uh, has somehow requested me a lot even to come physically and then join here. So they must have thought that, yes, I have honored them. Yes, of course, I have honored uh, all the IWI uh, people who, were, who, who all have invited. But there is one more point why I am here. Because I usually do not want to miss an opportunity to come to Northeast. The reason being, as a businessman, even if I consider that uh, India is my motherland, and uh, if I really consider that uh, it's a place where we live, and uh, where we live, where we, our house, our home, whatever you call, over there, the place for the god of wealth, Lakshmi and Kubey, is northeast. Uh, these challenges from different speakers, so I would not go into a lot of uh, detail and, and, and repeat the same. Uh, but, but just in terms of summarizing some of the challenges which are faced, one, uh, and this was very uh, beautifully, I think, also brought out by Mr. Kubey when he brought our attention to the cash flows and how the cash flows are important and varying really utilization across different seasons and across different waterways owing to the varying LED also becomes a challenge in projecting cash flows of the future on a consistent basis. The absence of cost efficient vessel designs was also spoken about. The high interest rate is something that has been reiterated multiple times, I won't go into that. But other than the interest rate, there are other aspects of lending and debt as well which become important. One of them is tenure. So for example, a typical five to seven year tenure or an asset that has a life of 25 to 30 years, essentially what it does is it leads to a very high front loading of the debt servicing for any operator. Todupuri, Kendriya Cabinet Montri, Harbanondo Kunwal Dangoria, Oinotom Kajo Husi, Prodorkoni Dwaru Baton, Dotha, Unmusoni Kajo, Hongkongo. आयुजन और दितियों दिना और ठाट बारोल प्रिल तारीख है प्रतिबंधी राष्ट्र बांग्लादेश भूटानों के प्रमुख खोली हंगसलिस्ट राज्य हमु तथा भारत सरकार और केवल गुरकियों डाइटोखिल मंत्री लगाते और हमारे 
माननीय मुख्यमंत्री डॉ हिमंत विश्व शर्मा डांगरिया भाषण प्रदान करे तथा जलमार्गे उत्तर पूर्वांचल लाभान्वित उल्लेख कर We welcome the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam. We now welcome the Honorable Unit Minister of Ports, Shipping and Waterways and Ayush, Government of India, Sri Horvananda Honu. Swagatam Janasun. We now welcome the Honorable Minister of Economic Affairs, Royal Government of Bhutan, Mr. Yongpo Loknath Sharmaji. This is a waterway conclave, which is a two-day conclave where we have tried to bring in the best in their respective uh, sectors who are doing uh, development of infrastructure, that is fairway, terminals, vessels, the regulatory affairs. Yesterday it started with the technical sessions, good discussions took place and we are trying to bring the expertise at one place in the town of Dibruga, which has been historically connected by waterways. Friends, I belong to Bo Young, but I belong to the generation which has witnessed the then excellent waterways in Assam and the poor road work. We could not travel even 100 kilometers from Dibruga without the necessity of crossing at least one ferry. Dibrugarh to Naharkati and Namru, Sadia with, from Dhola, Dibrugarh to Dhamaji and North Lakhimpur. As a student, when I accompanied my father to visit one of our tea gardens called Tarajan, less than 80 kilometers from here, after crossing Naharkati by ferry, we could only travel by boat through river Buri Dehing. All inputs were transported through river and these also dispatched by boats to Dibruga from where it was transshipped to steamer on way to London via Calcutta docks. Much later, friends, meter gauge line was utilized to cross Brahmaputra via railway bridge on way to Salimar station in Kerala. As you have seen in the video recently, Government of India under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji, with Mr. Sponwal ji leading in the Ministry of Shipping and uh, Riverways, it has been possible to break through what has been our dream for quite some time. As we all appreciate and recognize, waterways are a cost-effective and environment-friendly means of transport. Efficient utilization of this means will provide a boost and fill it to the industrial development not only in the Northeast region, but India's industrial development along with and commercial relations with neighboring countries. It would create several new economic opportunities for the citizens in the region. Uh, in the last few years, a number of visionary agreements, SOPs, have been signed between the countries in the region for restoring the waterways connectivity in the area which were there before the partition. 
and to promote the inter-regional trade. Investments have also been made for developing the waterways, as a result of which a record movement of more than 100 million metric tons happened during the last year. Similarly, on the Indo-Bangladesh Protocol route, a record movement of more than 4.5 million metric tons of cargo moved because of the initiatives that have been taken in the recent past. This year, vessels carrying FCI food grains also moved all the way from Patna on the Ganges to Pandu on Brahmaputra. Steel consignments on some of the longest vessels moved from Haldia all the way to Pandu. My state government, Manipur state government have few plans. The Bharat River is the potential, high, pot, potential highway a waterway I mean, in Manipur. The river Barak is an interstate river between Manipur and Assam. The river Barak is also transboundary, a river between India and Bangladesh. The river enters into Bangladesh and Karimganj in Assam and joins with Kushiara and Surya, Surma river system. There is a proposal to construct multi-purpose dam on river Barak at Tipaimuk in Manipur. So that way the potentiality of our potentiality of water route connectivity with the neighboring countries is now easy for Assam because before independence we have got this water route to export our goods for commerce and trade to the world because we got connected with Mula and Sitagong port through which we were able to export our goods and goods and our commerce and trade was improved before independence. When we look northeast in a map, we realize two things immediately. The first is what first is that we are a landlocked region. Second is that close to 99% of the region's boundaries are international. One aspect which is apparent but hardly given any consideration is how close we are to the Bay of Bengal. However, to explore and leverage this proximity with the Bay of Bengal, we need to explore our inland water system through mutually benefit, benefited cooperation with our international neighbors. This is a very happy thing for us and for us to be able to do water wage on GLEP 2022 in the IOGEN in the Ayogen. नदियों का नदियों का इस्तेमाल माल और जन परिवहन के लिए किया जा रहा है आज भी नदियों के जरिए भारी सामान को ले जाना सड़क या रेल के मुकाबले सस्ता और कम प्रदूषण फैलाने वाला होता है परंतु रेलवे के बढ़ते हुए विकास के साथ जलमार्ग से यातायात काफी हद तक गिर गया है it brings me great pleasure to be here today for the Waterways Conclave 2022. I take this opportunity to extend my warmest felicitations and appreciation to the Inland Waterways Authority of India and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry for organizing this timely conclave. I must also thank the District Administration of Dibraga for your un unconditional support hosting this. India and Bhutan have always had close relations and trade between the two countries. Is an important component of the relationship. Northeast or Assam was the major trading, trading hub of our ancestors as we heard over the sleep stories 
tent of Atisar, Taranga, Budama and others. The trade between Bhutan and India is increasing and will. And let's work towards enhancing link between Assam and eastern part of Bhutan that has huge potential in terms of economy of scale. For the next demo, I invite Sri SVK Reddy, Chief Engineer Technical, and Sri Amit Agarwal, Director Rajesh Oto. This agreement is between Inland Waterways Authority of India and Messrs. Rajesh Auto Merchandise Private Limited for operation and maintenance of temporary terminal FY West Bengal. For the next interview, I invite Sri Ravi Khan, Chief Engineer and PM GMVP, and Sri Jalaluddin Sheikh, Authorized Signatory Agreement between Inland Waterways Authority of India and Messrs. Zimex International for operation and maintenance of temporary terminal FY West Bengal. We on the part of the Ministry of Shipping are also facing the same concerns in maintaining navigability of our river route. Water transport is the most economical and environmentally friendly mode of transportation. Historically, Bangladesh is a riverine country. River marks the geography of the nation as well as a huge role in the life and livelihood. First of all, it's a great pleasure and pride for me because today's conference is very much important as far as the development of Northeast is concerned. Our Prime Minister's vision is to make Indian economy of $5 trillion. And for that reason, we need to develop Northeast part of the country. We have a special focus on Northeast and development of Northeast region and to improve GDP contribution in the country's contribution from Northeast. The region is geographically diverse, having natural beauty, rich biodiversity and unique cultural heritage. Ample tribal forest resources, push tourism potential, and despite our many challenges, the region has immense, immense potential for development. The appropriate policies with an emphasis on sustainable connectivity and industrialization is the need of the hour. Friends, in India, the cost of logistics is about 15 percent, whereas we should be targeting anywhere between 8 to 10 Every percentage point that is shaved off from the logistics cost saves about 2,32,000 crore in the cost. That means that much amount directly goes into the pockets of the common people and that much saving, that much reduction of pressure and inflation, pressure on prices, everything happens. So we must all try and make sure that our logistic system grows and there is a convergence between railway, highway, waterways, airlines, everything and that is the vision that Prime Minister the Narendra Modi ji has given, the vision of Gati Shakti National Infrastructure Highway. It gives me immense pleasure to be present at Waterways Conclave 2022, being organized by Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways at historic Dibrugar town, which was a major river port of our region prior to India's independence. I believe that a Waterways Conclave at this historic town is very significant step forward boosting regional connectivity, leading to faster economic growth. I thank Honorable Union Minister Sri Sarvananda Sunwal Danguria for this commendable initiative. At the same time, I'd also like to thank Minister from Bhutan, Honorable Union Minister R.K. Ranjan Rameshwar Teliji for sparing their valuable time to visit Assam and also to Honorable C. Nitin Gadkari ji, C. Vaishnav ji, and C. Kishan Reddy ji for joining us through virtual link 
and enlighten us with their vision for waterways connectivity in our region. As we all know, just like many other parts of the world, civilization in our country also flourishes around rivers. And those rivers remain an enduring symbol of our national culture. In the Rig Veda, there is a famous Nodi Struti Sukta, in which the seers regarded the rivers as life, bestowing life, nurturing, and life protecting divine mothers. In verse 5 of the Sukta of Rishi, enumerates 10 rivers beginning with Ganga. Thus he says, O Ganga Yamuna Saraswati, Sududri Parush, Parushni, follow my praise. O Asikni Meruna Vidha Vitasta Vita Arijikya and Sushuma, listen. The major rivers of our country, such as Ganga, Yamuna, Godavari, Saraswati, Narmada, Sindhu, Kaveri, and the Brahmaputra, that cover the length of and breadth of India, connect people with different lifestyle, language, and culture. These rivers have not just played a crucial role in furthering our social life, they have been the fountainhead of our economic growth since ancient times. As we all know, our maritime history begins during the third millennium BC when inhabitants of Indus Valley initiated maritime trading contact with Mesopotamia. Today, this occasion reminds us many more historic moment of British India. And once upon a time, this particular city, Dibrugur, was known as the tea city of the country because of its ability of producing first tea in the group. That is, the history carries the glory and pride of Assam and India. And also, this is the city, Dibrugur, where from first cargo vessel started moving in 1844, from the river, river Pool to <coughs> Calcutta, Sita Ground. I do not want to elaborate more. There are many more historical evidence of the greatness of the river, importance of the river in the global scenario. But today you have all come to attend this two days regional waterways conclave. Why this conclave is being organized here? What is the objective? Lux kya hai? Udesh kya hai? Udesh aur lux ek hi hai. Ki hum apne jalmark ki vikas ke jariye hum apne nadi mein basay huye shakti ko hum vishesh rup se mainata de sahi upyog kare aur अपने पड़ोसी देश का साथ व्यापार का हम रिश्ता बनाएं, दोस्ती बनाएं और हमारे कल्चरल इंटीग्रेशन, बिजनेस इंटीग्रेशन, ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स एंड आल्सो प्रमोटिंग आवर फ्रेंडशिप, लॉन्ग लास्टिंग फ्रेंडशिप विथ आवर नेबरिंग देशों, लाइक बीबीआईएन, बांग्लादेश, भूटान, इंडिया, नेपाल, वी हैव ए फैमिली � right from Myanmar, Thailand, Brunei, Laos, Cambodia, Singapore, Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. So these are the next door neighbor. And from the river, if you start making an assessment, then you will discover within the radius of 2,000 kilometers, all the big cities are located. And in this region, you know the, what is the strength of population? 800 million population. यानी कि अच्छी करोड़ का एक बहुत बड़ा समाज है इसी इलाका में और सारे देश के अगर आबादी को जुड़ा जाए एक सौ पैंतीस करोड़ तो हम अपने जलमार्ग के जरिए थ्रो वाटरवेज 
if we could connect rest part of the country and also our neighboring nation, then it will be a greatest opportunities for our young entrepreneurs, producers, exporters, importers, all the business houses to explore this situation for the benefit of their own and as well as for the country.